God, we come before you today in this moment to declare that you are God and beside you there is none else. You are the creator God, the God of our fathers and the God of our future. You are the lily of the valley and the bright and morning star, the sweet rose of Sharon and the great I am. With the best of our vocabulary together we say, God, that you are awesome. My God is awesome. He can move mountains. Keep me in the valley. Hide me from the rain. My God is awesome. Heals me when I'm broken. Strength where I've been weakened. Forever he will reign. Keep me in the valley. Savior of the whole world, giver of salvation, by his stripes I'm healed, my God is awesome, today I am forgiven, his grace is why I'm living, oh somebody help me praise his holy name. Man, how's everybody doing this morning? Good. All right, let's all go ahead and stand together. We're going to open up with a congregational song, The Glory Land Way. Anybody looking forward to going to heaven one day? Amen. Let's sing it like we mean it, The Glory Land Way. I'm in the way, the bright and shining way. I'm in the glory land way. Telling the world that Jesus saves today. Yes, I'm in the glory land way. Let's sing, church. Well, I'm in the glory land way. I'm in the glory land way. Heaven is near and the way goeth clearer for. I'm in the glory land way. On the second. Well, listen to the call, the gospel call today. Get in the glory land way. Wonders come home, oh, hasten to obey and get in the glory land way. Well, I'm in the glory land way. I'm in the glory land way. Heaven is near and the way groweth clearer for I'm in the glory land way on the last. Onward I go rejoicing in his love. I'm in the glory land way. Soon I 
I shall see him in that home above. Oh, I'm in the glory land way. One more time, church. I'm in the glory land way. I'm in the glory land way. Heaven is near and the way grow with clearer for I'm in the glory land way. Somebody give the Lord some praise this morning. Amen. You can be seated. Amen. Welcome to church this morning. Good to see everybody. Uh, got a good number in the house and a special occasion today. And, uh, and that is we have, uh, I think, seven, eight, nine, uh, following the Lord in water baptism. Water baptism. And can we give the Lord a hand for new lives, new lives. And uh, they're, they're all ladies. All ladies, unless somebody was added to the group I don't know about, but all over the last few months, they have trusted Christ as their life. And uh, man, I'm so thankful the Bible says something like this, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. And every one of these ladies, as they enter into this pool, they're not the, the same old girl, the same old uh, woman that they be. They're walking in newness, and, uh, and just by them being willing to follow the Lord, in water baptism, as he did in the book of John, chapter number 1, whenever John looked up and said, Behold the Lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the world. As John come down and into that water, and John baptized our Lord. And you know what? Listen, water baptism does not save nobody. It don't add nothing to salvation, and neither does it take away from salvation. It is simply these ladies is publicly before God and you and everybody else is tuning in online saying this, I once was lost, but now I'm found. I once was blind, but now I see. They've trusted Christ, and they want to please Him. So let's give the Lord a hand as this first young lady's coming in. Just come on around. Sit there, Faith Pastor Tyler. Yeah, you can sit. I'm going to ask you to hold my hand there. Hold them right there and grip that one. And I'm going to place this hand behind you, okay? And I'm going to pray, and then we're going to baptize you. But you know right now, without a shadow of a doubt, Jesus is your Savior. And that's all that matters in life. Amen. Amen. Let's pray. Our Father, we love you. And it's a privilege to baptize this, my sister, in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. <laughs> Amen. In the house this morning is the Pearl Ministry. And that's one of the Pearl ladies. Amen. Any more Pearls out there? If the Pearls here, stand up. Stand up, Pearls. They're directors. Miss Dolores, where are you at? Amen. Where are your husband here with you this morning? He's not here? Okay, I thought I'd seen him. Amen. Let's give his ladies a hand. Glad y'all here this morning. Come on in. Thank God for that ministry. You need to look them up online. I'm going to ask you to hold me here. Right here. I'm going to ask you the same question. You know for sure, without a shadow of a doubt, heaven's your home. All because of Jesus. Amen. That's all that matters. Amen. Our Father, we love you. And God, we thank you, Lord, for salvation. And I ask you, God, to bless this young lady, God, Lord. And it's a privilege to baptize this, my sister, in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. <laughs> Amen. You're at peace that you've trusted Jesus as your Savior. Amen. Our Father. In the name of Jesus is why all this is happening, God. For who you are and what you've done in these ladies' lives, you take this young lady, use her for the glory of God. It is a privilege to baptize this, my sister, name, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. <laughs> Amen. I like that shirt. He makes beauty out of ashes. Let me get that for you. Let me lay, hold this right here. Peace in your heart 
between you and Jesus. Amen. Our Father, thank you, Lord, for this dear lady and the salvation you've brought her way. And God, I pray, Lord, right now that you would help her, equip her, surround her with your love and courage. In this, an honor to baptize this, my sister, in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. You at peace with the Lord? You know you're going to heaven. Amen. Amen. Don't you ever forget it. You hear me? No matter where life takes you, no matter what, life, no matter what nobody says, Jesus loves you. Jesus is there for you. Never leave you nor forsake you, okay? All right? Never forget it. Our Father, it's a privilege to baptize this, my sister, in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. <laughs> And these ladies are walking in with tears in their eyes. <laughs> Good, Lord. I feel the Lord back here. Anyway, I don't know what they're feeling out there, but I feel them back here. You at peace with the Lord? Ain't God been good? You know, all the past of life has brought you to this occasion. You know that? All because God loves you, wants to save you. You know, all the days ahead of you, there ain't no telling what God's going to do with you. Keep your eyes on them, okay? Our Father. It's a privilege to baptize this, my sister, in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Just turn around. Her daughter's standing here. She's going to be baptized here in a few minutes, and she wanted to see her mama baptized, so I said, we'll flip you around in the water. It don't matter what direction you're facing, amen? You at peace with the Lord? No heaven's your home. Like I told the rest of them, don't ever forget it. Jesus is the one that makes the difference. Whenever you fall, you falter like we all do. He still loves you. He's still there for you. Keep your eyes on him, okay? Grab my hands. You want, yeah, that's fine. Our Father, we love you. And it's a prison baptized. This is my sister, in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Well, I don't know if I ought to touch that. <laughs> Amen. How old are you? Fourteen. 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 Man, that's a good age. It's a good age. Good age. Now you got your however long God's going to bless you is ahead of you to live for Him. Don't let nobody tell you nothing no different than this right here. Jesus loves you, saves you, and can and will do great things through you. Okay? All you got to do is be sensitive to Him, follow Him, stay in that book, that Bible, and there's no telling what lays ahead where God's going to take you. Okay? This world needs some good young teenagers that love God. It serves him, okay? So don't listen to nothing else nobody else says. Don't listen to them crazy people out there in the world. You're 14, love God, Jesus saves you. Man, you're heaven bound with a hammer down. <laughs> Our Father, we love you. And thank you, Lord, for this mother and daughter today who's following you in baptism. What you've done in their hearts and their lives, God. And I pray, God, you continue to work through them, in them, God, Lord, to stretch out through their family, God. We believe in household salvation, God. So I pray, God, you would answer those very prayers. And it's a prayer to baptize this, my sister, in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen, amen, amen. I think anybody else need to be saved? I didn't say baptized. I said say. Amen. Let's all stand to our feet. And uh, Brother Josh is coming back, going to lead us in a song at this time. We'll also be receiving our Sunday morning tithe and offering. Our children's ministry will be exiting out the side door. And let's worship the Lord. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray. We thank you, Lord, for these that's followed you today in baptism. I pray that you bless the remainder of our service. Bless the uh, kid ministry, Lord, as Brother Brian teaches them. And, and Miss Kristen and those working in the nursery, God, I pray that you use them this morning as the seeds are planted, God. And you're saving souls even down there, God. We thank you, Lord, for it. Bless the offering. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. amen. Sing this Let's morning. Sing, keep on the firing line.
If you're in the battle for the Lord and right, keep on the firing line. If you win, my brother, surely you must fight. Keep on the firing line. There are many dangers that we all must face. If we die fighting, it is no disgrace. Coward in the service, he will find no place. So keep on the firing line. Oh, you must fight, be brave against all evil. Never run, nor even lag behind. If you would win for God and the right, just keep on the firing line. On the second, well, God will only use the soldier he can trust. Keep on the firing line. If you wear a crown, then bear the cross you must. Keep on the firing line. Life is but to labor for the master, dear. Help to banish evil and to spread good cheer. Great you'll be rewarded for your service here. So keep on the firing. Let's sing, church. Oh, you must fight. Be brave against all evil. Never run nor even lag behind. If you would win for God and the right, just keep on the firing line. On the last, well, when we get to heaven, brother, we'll be glad. Keep on the firing line. How we'll praise the Savior for the call we had. Keep on the firing line. When we see the souls that we have helped to win, leading them to Jesus from the paths of sin, with a shout of welcome, we all march in. So keep on the firing line. Oh, you must fight, be brave against all evil. Never run, nor even lag behind. If you would win for God and the right, just keep Keep on the firing line. Somebody give the Lord some praise in God's house tonight. You can be seated. Amen.
do this right here. These are the days of Elijah declaring the word of the Lord. And these are the days of your servant Moses, righteousness being restored. And these are the days of great trial, of famine and darkness and sore. Still we are the voice in the desert crying, prepare ye the way of the Lord. Behold, he comes. Riding on the clouds, shining like the sun. salvation this morning. Amen. And these are the days of Ezekiel, the dry bones becoming as flesh. And these are the days of your servant David rebuilding a temple of praise. And these are the days of the harvest. The fields are as wide in your world, and we are the laborers in your vineyard, declaring the word of the Lord. Behold, he comes, riding on the clouds, shining like the sun, as the trumpet calls, lift your voice, it's the year of Jubilee. There's no God like Jehovah. 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 I'm glad some people are excited about there's no God like Jehovah. Amen. Amen. Rest of you to sitting there like a stick in the mud. You need to meet that God. There ain't no God like Jehovah. Amen. 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 Before I preach today, there's something I want to read to you. Amen. This is for you sticking the muds. Take your Bibles and go to Revelation chapter number 4. There's some people that don't like new songs. Somebody help me. Son was worshiping a while ago. The rest of you sitting there like, you ain't never heard. There ain't no God like Jehovah. These are the days of Elijah. The fields are white for harvest. You take every word, every word out of that song right there, and you'll find it's scriptural. It's scriptural. It's scriptural. 
Some people don't like it because they keep saying there ain't no God like Jehovah. 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 Six words. I know that everybody, them good old fashioned, independent, fundamental, King James, hell, fire, fire, brimstone preacher says you ought not be doing them 7 Eleven songs. But the 7 Eleven songs is more scriptural than a lot of what you listen to in Revelation chapter number 4. Look at this Revelation chapter number 4, verse number 8. And the four beasts had each of them six wings about him, and they were full of eyes within, and they rest not day and night. This is what's going on right now around the throne room of heaven that God that saved you saved. Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, which was and is and is to come over and over and over again. They're hollering. So you know what I say? There ain't no God like Jehovah. 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 There ain't no God Jack Lova. There ain't no God like Jehovah. There ain't no God like Jehovah. There ain't no God like Jehovah. Amen. There's a third to save. Amen. 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 I'm tired of all this bull garbage of religion. I don't like that song. Well, go home. Amen. Amen. Go start you a church. Go find you a place. Go sing everything you like. But my Bible says that right now they're in heaven saying the same thing over and over and over. But check this out. They ain't got no idea what it's like to be lost. They ain't got no idea what it's like to experience grace. They don't know what forgiveness is or mercy is. But I am a hell deserving drug addict drunk that's been washed in the blood of Jesus Christ. And there ain't no God like Jehovah. Amen, amen, amen. Take your Bibles to 1 Corinthians chapter number 15. Amen. That's all in line. I'm not out of line. I'm all in line with what God gave me to preach. Amen. Amen. I'm just tired of feeling that stifling crap that I feel. Yeah, that's what I said. In the church house, when somebody begins to worship, you can feel that stuff. You can feel that. So the best way to get rid of that stuff is just call it out, dip it in the blood, bleed the blood of Jesus Christ. If it's Bible, we're going to do it. If it don't agree with your Bible, find you another one. Say amen. But it's in that book. We're going to sing it. We're going to worship it. We're going to preach it. Because there ain't no God like Jehovah. Amen. Amen. No apologies. 1 Corinthians chapter number 15. Nathan, back up to verse number 1. I know I told you the mother too. This is why we're excited. The Bible says, Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand. Can I ask a question? Those of you who just got mad at me, those of you who got your emotions all up in a row, have you ever received the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ? Well, if you have, stand there. Not in your feelings, not in your emotions, not in what your mama and your daddy told you, but stand in the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible says, by which also... You're saved. If you keep in memory, that's what some of you need to do. You need to remember some things. You need to remember you wouldn't be where you're sitting at if it wasn't for Jesus Christ. You wouldn't have the clothes on your back if it wasn't for Jesus. You wouldn't have no hope. You wouldn't, have, you wouldn't know what love is. You wouldn't have life if it wasn't for Jesus. He says, by which also you are saved if you keep in memory what I preached unto you. Unless ye have believed in vain. Paul was saying it's possible. I ain't naive. I ain't naive. Everybody that says they're saved ain't saved. Some people just get saved because that's the way they've been trained all their life. 
There's some people that's bad just because that's what they've always been. They don't know why. Mom and daddy was. That's what they are. Some people carry King James Bible because that's what somebody put in their head. They don't know why. Some people say they know Jesus because people tell them they aren't noted, but they ain't never met Jesus. It is possible to believe in vain. Look at verse number 3. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received. Paul says, I ain't going to bring nothing to you I ain't already experienced. How? That Christ. 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 Not your husband. Not your mama. Not your preacher. Not the evangelist. How that Christ died for, look at this, our sins. Underscore that in your Bible. He died for our sins. According to the what? I'm glad I didn't say Baptist. If it said Baptist, a lot of us wouldn't have hey, Most of my Baptist friends I had before I took this pastorship done disowned me. According to them, I ain't Baptist no more. <laughs> yeah, you pharisaical fool. And that he was buried. Somebody needs to send him this thing too, by the way. And that he rose again the third day. According, look at this. Here it is again. The scriptures. It's not based on how you're feeling. It's based on the scriptures. And that he was seen of Cephas. Then of the twelve. After that... He was seen of about 500 brethren at once, of whom the greater part remain unto this present, but some are fallen asleep. After that, he was seen of James, then of all the apostles, and last of all, he was seen of me also, as of one born out of due time. 9 and 10 is what we want to preach from this morning. Paul says, for I am the least of the apostles. That am not meet to be called an apostle. Because, look at this, I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am. And his grace, which was bestowed upon me, was not in vain, but I labored more abundantly than they all, yet not I, look at this, but the grace of God which was with me. Let's pray. Father, we love you. God, help me this morning to preach in power and demonstration of the Spirit of God. I pray, Lord, for those that may be here today, lost, undone, in sin. God, may today be their day of salvation. Encourage the saint of God. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. Look at it. We call your attention back to verse number nine. The Bible says, For I am the what? Least of the apostles that am not meet to be called an apostle. Here we got old Paul, the least of the apostles, because of who he was before he felt unworthy to be called an apostle. Look what he says in verse number nine because I persecuted the church of God the church of God what Paul's called up in in verse number nine right here what he's saying is I ain't even worthy to be called an apostle now just for a minute for by way of illustration and for preaching purposes let me say something like this right here I'm not worthy to be a Christian I'm not worthy to lift my hand up in praise I'm not worthy to open up my mouth and say worthy is the Lamb of God I'm not worthy to say there is no God like Jehovah I'm not worthy to even walk into the house of God because you want to know why he says because I persecuted the church of God what Paul was saying in verse number nine to make our application today for my way of introduction is this his past is what's causing him to feel so unworthy It's what he had done in days behind him that caused him to feel like he is no good and there's a lot of us sitting in here this morning that we let something that happened yesterday we let things that we did a uh, months ago 
12 years ago, and that's what's holding us down right now. And we feel so unworthy that we're a child of God because the devil loves nothing else but to break up our past and hold it over our shoulders, just like them young ladies walking in here a while ago. The other ladies is here. I can talk about myself all the time. The devil is breaking up my past about who I was, and you know, and all the things I used to be. And you know what? I feel unworthy to be standing up here. I feel like I shouldn't be up here. But check this out. Let me get back before I chase a rabbit. Though Paul, he felt that way, but yet he was one of the most influential, influential apostles there was. Yet Paul was deeply humbled. He said, I am what I am. True humility is not convincing yourself that you are worthless, but recognizing God's work on you. Listen to me. It's having God's perspective on who you are and acknowledging His grace in your life. I'm not going to be long this morning. It's going to be short. It's going to be short. But listen. Something stuck out to me in verse number 10. I've said it a thousand times. I've preached it. I, you know, just uh, when Paul says, I am what I am by the grace of God. I am what I am. Now listen, that word what is very important. That word what is very important. When Paul says, I am what I am. I am. He didn't say I am who I am by the grace of God because there's a vast difference between being who and a what. If you are who you are by the grace of God, we're in a lot of trouble. Say amen. You see, that's the problem. There's a lot of people walking around and saying I am who I am by the grace of God. And they're giving themselves accolades because they ain't drinking no more. They're giving themselves and pats on the back because they ain't drugging no more. They think they done arrived because they got a skirt on that reaches the floor or they got a shirt and a tie on and they ain't looking like the rest of the crowd out there. There's a lot of people that walk around stubbing their nose at people, you know, because they're a little bit better. But Paul didn't say, I am who I am by the grace of God. Paul says, I am what I am by the grace of God. I want to preach to you this morning on that thought. I am what I am by the grace of God. I'm not who I am by the grace of God. If you really knew who I was, you wouldn't be sitting where you're at. If you really knew the thoughts that run through my mind, you wouldn't be listening to what I got to say right now. But it ain't who I am. It's what I am. And when I look in the mirror and the devil begins to throw them accusations at me and the devil begins to remind me of where I come from, the things I've done, the failures and the faults and the things in my life, I have to say, you're right, devil. I'm a no good for nothing. Hell deserves it. But you forget, it ain't who I am that's getting me to heaven. It ain't who I am that's causing me to stand. It's what I am that's causing me to be who I am. Y'all understand what I'm saying in this morning? I want to remind you, it ain't who you are. It's what you are. If you're saved. 1 Corinthians 15 starts out talking to the brethren. The brethren. And I've been spending a lot of time lately preaching to the church because the church needs to get itself right, prepare to meet the bride, and then we'll start seeing the lost come in. Say amen, amen. We see a lot of you walk around and you parade around on who you are. But it ain't who you are, it's what you are. Number one, Paul can say a lot of things. Paul, you got, you got to understand Paul. You see, Paul didn't take no accolades. Paul wasn't applauding himself. Paul was saying, listen, I don't even deserve to be penning these words. I don't even deserve to be an apostle. I don't even deserve, hey, to do the things that I'm doing. Matter of fact, I'm the least of all these other guys because I was the one that talked about the men of God. I was the one that walked up in the homes of people who tried to love God and follow God. I was the one that ripped the daddy from his children, took the mama from the house. I was the one that destroyed hey, families and marriages. I was the one that tried to manipulate and draw people away from the gospel. I was the one that persecuted the church. And you may say, oh no, I'd never do nothing like that. But there's some of you in here, you was persecuting the church a few minutes ago because when that song started to play, I felt it. It started to stifle down a little bit. You 
still shout when you say, I believe he's coming back. But you can't shout on the days of Elijah. You are hindering the Spirit of God, which is persecuting the church of God. Listen to me. There's a lot of things I don't like. But listen, it ain't based on who I am. It's based on what I am. And on what I am is what causes me to do the things that I do. Why? Number one, you're a citizen of the kingdom. Listen to me, you new converts, you born again children of God in here. Hey, I don't care. Listen, it don't make no difference what the world labels you. The day you got saved, you became a citizen of his kingdom. Hey, you're just a pilgrim and stranger passing through. Listen, listen to me. Hey, you pearls that's in here, you new converts that's in here, you old saints of God that's in here stuck in the mud in your ways. Listen, it ain't about how far you've come. It ain't about what you've learned or right. It's about what you are. You are what you are by the grace of God. You ain't all what you are because you are Baptist. You ain't all what you are because you tithe. You ain't all what you are because of this and that. But you are what you are by the grace of God, and that has made you a child of the kingdom, a citizen of the kingdom. That's what you are, every one of us. I got a right to hold my head up. I don't give a flying rip what you think of me. I got your looks a while ago when I was saying what I was saying, and I started rattling off, there ain't no God like Jehovah. I got them looks. If looks could kill, you'd be burying me, hey, here in a little while. But you know what? It don't bother me a bit. You know what them things, you know what them looks do? It fires me up. You know what it does when them things start coming? It fires me up. It gets me tore up to make me want to shout a little louder, makes me want to preach a little harder. Why? Because it ain't who I am. It's what I am. I'm a citizen of the kingdom. And right now, in the far country, there's a throne room of God. In around the throne room of God, they're standing there and they're hollering, Where are they? Where are they? Where are they? Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, which is, which was, it is to come. And if over there, hey, if over there, they're hollering and they're worshiping, I think back down over here, you see, that's my country, that's my home, and I am what I am. So there ain't no God like Jehovah. There ain't no God like Jehovah. Why? Because I'm a citizen. I'm a citizen. I'm a citizen. I am what I am by the grace of God. What is that, preacher? I'm a citizen of his kingdom. I am what I am by the grace of God. Number two. I said, tell me. Ladies and gentlemen, I am what I am by the grace of God because God's grace, because of God's grace, I'm a citizen of the kingdom. Number two, I'm a co laborer in the kingdom. I'm a co laborer in the kingdom. What does that mean? I'm not by myself. I'm not by myself. I know everybody in here ain't for Him, I know everybody in here ain't for me. But a while ago, when I got riled up and started hollering, there ain't no God like Jehovah. One popped up over here, and I thought, uh huh, he's with me. Ain't no God like Jehovah. Another one popped up, uh huh, he's with me. Ain't no God like Jehovah. And another one popped up, uh huh, there's another one. And then there's another one. And then there's another one. You know what that told me? I told the devil, go to hell where the fire never goeth out. That's his home anyway, because there ain't no God like Jehovah. There ain't no God like Jehovah. Why? Because I'm a co laborer in Christ. You remember this. You ain't by yourself. There's places in life that life will take you that you'll feel like you're all alone and nobody understands and nobody cares. But you remember, you are what you are by the grace of God. You're a citizen of the kingdom and you're a co laborer in the kingdom. You ain't by yourself. You ain't by yourself, man. You ain't by yourself. You ain't by yourself. Is that your boy sitting there laying on your lap? You ain't by yourself. Ain't no God like Jehovah. Look at what God did. I tell you one thing, religion will never do that. Religion will never fix that. Religion would never, ever do that right there. But you know what? There ain't no God like Jehovah. Clean up a mama, put her sitting in the church house, put a boy sitting on her lap. There ain't no God like Jehovah. You see these ladies, you know what they're shouting about? Because they know what it's like to persecute the church of God, but to meet the marvelous grace of God. And now they know they are what they are by the grace of God. 
Listen. Listen. I'm a citizen of his kingdom because of the grace of God. I'm a co-laborer in the kingdom because of the grace of God. Last but not least, Lord, help me. What I like the most is not your opinion of me. I don't care when it comes to this. And my shout and my excitement ain't because of who you are. It's because of what I am. You see, you don't understand. You don't, you don't understand my past. You don't know my story. You don't know where I come from. I was always the one left out. I was always the one people looked down on. I was always the underdog in life. I didn't have the best childhood coming up. I didn't have the best childhood at all coming up. Parents together, parents apart. Parents together, parents apart. Divorce in the house. Drugs, alcohol, all these other kind of things. All them things are happening, you know, and going on. But you know what? As I was sitting on the couch this week, and I looked over there across the room at my dad, who's on his way out to check out of here. You know what? I mean, he, he, he's on his way, hey, to eternity. Hey, you know, I got to sit there and look at that, and all these memories begin to flood in my mind. And my mama's here this morning. Hey, you know what? And I love my mama. She did the best she could do. She got me to Jesus. Hey, amen. Give my mama a hand for staying faithful to God and getting me to Jesus and exposing me to Jesus. But you know what, my friend? I was sitting there and all the past, I'm talking about the bad past, begin to flood my mind and all these memories begin, hey, to come back up. And I felt some old emotions that I thought I'd got rid of begin to stir down way deep in my soul and they begin to rise up in me. And I felt something coming. It's been a battle that's been raging for a couple of weeks now. But when I looked across the room and then I looked at myself and God reminded me, listen boy, if it wasn't for the grace of God, if it wasn't for the grace of God, hey, you are what you are by the grace of God. Listen to me, listen to me. I wouldn't trade all the hell raising. I wouldn't trade everything of the past because it's what I look at of yesterday. That's where it's got me where I'm at right now. It was those things that brought me to the grace of God. I'm not making hey, I'm not saying that sin is right. That's not what I'm saying at all. But what I am saying, for we know that all things work together for good to those who love God. And I am what I am by the grace of God. You see, some of you, you blame where you are in life right now based on a situation. Some of you say, well, I'm this and that because of this and that. And Paul says, I am what I am. By the grace of God, I'm a citizen of the kingdom. And there ain't nothing Camellia, Camellia, whatever her name is, or Joe Biden can do about it. I'm a citizen of that country, that kingdom. There ain't a devil or imp of hell that can change that. My citizenship is recorded in the blood of the Son. There ain't nothing they can do about it. And you know what? Though it seems like the world is against us, I have co-laborers in Christ. I know everybody ain't for me, but I also know everybody ain't against me. We're not in this fight alone, Mr. Lord. No doubt there's times that filtrate your mind with the ministry that you work in, the things that you do, things you've given up, and sacrifices you've made. Then you look around, what God is doing. And then, you know, I've seen that. I've seen that, you know, people sending money. People, wait, people, it's because you're not by yourself. Co-laborers in Christ. Co-laborers, you're not by yourself. you got people that love you and care about you. Why? Because other people's experienced the grace of God. I've experienced the grace of God. What y'all don't know is he's one of y'all. He's just in the mail form. His life was messed up and destroyed 
drugs and alcohol. There's another one sitting right there. What a lot of y'all don't know is he was a boy. Hey, what but three or four months ago, he was strung out. Hey, done went and done died a couple of times. And they had to uh, bring him back. You know what I'm saying? This did not exist. But you know what they are right now? It ain't because he decided to clean up. It's because of the grace of God. The grace of God. But when others turned their back, he walked into a church house and said, you know what? We'll love you. We'll take you back just the way you are. Why? Because you're not by yourself, Richard. you got co-laborers in Christ. We are what we are by the grace of God. Why? Because number three, I am what I am by the grace of God. I'm a child of the King. I'm a child of the King. Yeah. There's my physical mama sitting right over there. Brought me into this world. Nobody loves me like she loves me. My sister's probably listening online right now. She's on taking care of my dad. But she thinks she's the favorite. She's not. <laughs> I'm a daddy's boy. A ain't nothing wrong with that. I mean, that's just, it's just what it is. I mean, a mama's boy. Mama's boy. I'm trying to think ahead. Sitting at home. Dying is my earthly father. But sitting on the throne room. Sitting in the throne room. Somebody said something like this one time. I am what I am. The author and the finisher of your faith. <laughs> I'm a child of the king. All of y'all been fine all, following all them tabloids about the princes and all of them and all of them just left and because he married some mixed uh, girl or something. Y'all know all that stuff going on with the, with the people overseas over there. Some of y'all watch it. Some of you don't. My daughter's all up in it. She gave me the whole full run, you know, the other day. I just listened to her. I, care. I don't care nothing about it. But she wanted to talk, so I listened. Hey, Amen. Just say, uh-huh, yeah, uh -huh, yeah, really? Uh-huh, yeah. Ask me what she said afterwards. I ain't got no idea. <laughs> but part of the story I caught was this. His daddy, daddy? His daddy cut him off. Cut him off, daddy. Tyler Perry built him a house. Tyler Perry gave him this. Tyler Perry did this. His daddy, his family, cut him off. Cut him off. I think it's Princess Diana's boy. And that, that, that thing. Is that what I'm talking about? Perry, is that his name? Harry. Harry. Who would name their kid Harry? If there's any Harrys in here, I apologize. I shouldn't have said that out loud. <laughs> Listen, listen, family cuts you off. I got families cut us off. I got family that won't have nothing to do with her because of me. She's suffering. That woman right there has got family that's persecuting her because of me. Me. Who I am. Who I am. Not what I am who I am. Persecute. But you know what? I am what I am by the grace of God. And there ain't nothing nobody can do about the fact that I am still a child of the King. Nathan, bring that last scripture up for me, Titus. Listen, I don't know who you are today or where you at, but listen to me. Listen to me. Choir, make your way back up. Brandon, get shame ready. Get shame ready. Bring that scripture back up. Look at this. This is for everybody. I am what I am by the grace of God. Look what Titus says. For the grace of God that bringeth what? Hath appeared to, here's the important word, all men. All men. And close them before they sing this song. They had no idea they was doing this one. But in closing, listen, I am what I am, which is a citizen of the kingdom, a co-laborer in the kingdom, a child of the king. 
Because the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared to all men. God don't pick and choose who gets to have the grace of God. You either accept it or reject the grace of God. For the grace of God has brought salvation to all men. Which means if you're sitting here right now and you've never trusted Christ as your Savior, you can. There's grace for you. You become a citizen of the kingdom. <clears throat> Join forces with the co-laborers in Christ. Become a child of the king. Oh, preacher, I've done too much. Oh, sh- sh- don't listen to the devil. Don't listen to the devil. Man, if we begin to tell our story and they think they've done too much, ain't that right, Jason? Listen, I'm here to tell you something this morning. I don't know who you are. It don't matter who you are. What matters right now is what you are. And you're either a child of the king or you're a child of the devil. Because you're serving one of the two. One of the two. You say, oh no, I'm not serving the devil. If you're not a child of his, you have your father the devil but the good news is this god don't come along and say well i decided to give him grace you're just out of luck i elect you to go to heaven and i elect you to go to hell that's called calvinism doctrine of the devil from the pit of hell nobody is destined to hell If anybody is destined to hell, then that scripture is a lie. For God so loved the world that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. I'll in no wise cast out any who the Father has brought to me. God did create hell for you. He created it for the devil and his angels. Matter of fact, I should have looked this scripture up. I think it's in Peter. It says, it's his will that none should perish, but that all should come to repentance. What brings us to repentance? For the grace of God. I am what I am by the grace of God. Are you here this morning? And you've never been saved? This is your day. This is your day. This is your day. Every head bowed, every eye closed, nobody looking around. I wonder before we sing this song, this ain't a normal invitational song, but it fits, it fits those that are saved. But I wonder today, some have come as guests to watch baptism, some first time guests. Some just come to church every time the doors is open, but none of that is irrelevant. What's important right now is, do you know what you are? Do you know what you are? But I wonder if there's somebody in the room that says, you know what, preacher? I know what I am. I'm a child of the king. I'm a child of the king. I've been saved. I've been born again. And you know what, preacher? I'm going to lift my hand up. And I want you to know that I am a child of the, I know what I am. Would you do that this morning? If you know that you know, would you lift your hand up? All around the sanctuary, people's lifting their hands. I know I'm a child of the king. I know I'm on my way to heaven. Keep them hands up. Yes, praise the Lord. You can put them down. Listen, hands up all over the sanctuary of people that say, I am what I am by the grace of God. But the saddest part about today is there's also some hands that did not go up. And right now, you don't know what you are. All you know is who you are. And today, God wants to save you. For salvation, salvation, by the grace of God, has appeared to all men. Today, the grace of God has appeared to you. And God wants to save you. This is what we're going to do, friend. I'm going to pray for you that didn't raise your hand. We're going to stand to our feet all around the sanctuary. Let's all stand. All around. Please stand with me. Nobody's making ready to leave. We're standing all the way around. 
all the way around the sanctuary. We're going to bow our heads. We're going to close our eyes. I'm fixing to pray. And they're going to sing this song right here. And this song is all about who we are in the sense of what we are. And there ain't no shame on us because we've been born again, washed by his blood. And those of you that could not raise your hand a while ago, when they begin to sing, I'm going to pray. They're going to begin to sing. I want you to step out. You say, preacher, I don't know if I can give this up, if I can do that. Well, I had the same thought. God ain't asking you to do nothing but come to him. Come to him. Let the grace of God do the work that it was intended for the grace of God to do. You can leave here today knowing that you know that you know that Jesus is the best thing that's ever happened to you. I'm going to pray. You didn't raise your hand. I'm talking to you. You know who you are. I know who you are. God knows who you are. This is your day. God's calling you. You feel that little flutter in your heart? You feel a little sweat in your palms? You hear that still small voice calling you saying, you know, I, he's talking to you. He's talking to you. You're the one today. God wants to save you and change your life. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray. I ask you, God, to do a work that you can do. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. They're singing. Your heads are bowed. Eyes are closed. Will you come? Come on, sir. Come on. Come to Jesus. Step out. Step out. Take a friend who's beside you by the hand. Shame tried to tell me to come keep on. looking back. A guilt held me captive to the pain of come the Come on, past. friend. Ma'am. Regret you. You couldn't raise your hand. You've had your chance, but Satan's a liar. I know who I am. I am free. By the blood of the Lamb. I am free. Yes, I've been born again. I am forgiven. Let me cry. A child of the King. Leave here with no shame. There ain't no shame on me. Come on, friend. Now fear is a coward. Fear is a coward. And doubt is a thing. Don't let doubt take it. And worries can drive you straight to defeat. But there is a promise. You hear that, sir? He's given to me. The battle's been won. Yeah, he's my victory. I am saved by the oh, blood of Jesus. Jesus. I am free. Oh, I love you. Yes, I've been born again. I am forgiven, a child of the King. There ain't no shame on me. No shame on me. Eyes are closed, subs on the altar praying. Just hang on, Brandon, get your drink. No. I'm gonna have him sing his song one more time. 
Because I know there's some people in the building that's lost and you're on your way to a place that was not intended for you. Your mind is being full of all kind of thoughts and I can't live it, I can't do this, I can't do that, I can't change this, I can't change that. The truth of the matter is none of those things matter. What matters right now is what you would do with Christ. You could lift your hand a while ago and say, I know I am what I am. I'm a child of the King, which is acknowledging I'm lost without Jesus. And I don't want you leaving here lost without Jesus. I want you to meet the greatest thing, the greatest friend there ever is or was. And his name is Jesus. So this is what we're going to do together. I'm going to have them sing the song again. You ain't got to bow your head. You ain't got to close your eyes. Because if you ain't no shame on you, I want you to worship. And this is how we're going to close the service today. Sir, ma'am, you know you're lost without God. And this altar call, this song, this next one is for you. And if you don't come, you're saying, I'm choosing hell over heaven. I'd rather have defeat, and discouragement, and depression, and no hope and no peace over the forgiveness and the mercy of God. That's your choice. You'll close our service today by your movement to an altar. But I know there's somebody in the house that needs salvation. And you're holding on. If you hold on too long, it's going to be too late. Rest of you to saved and born again, worship. And listen to the words as they sing it again. We are what we are by the grace of God. The shame tried to tell me to keep a looking back. The guilt held me captive Come on. to the pain of the past. Sir, to dread George. you through whisper, you've had your chance. But say that he's a liar, don't I, listen to him. I know who I am. I am saved by the blood of the Lamb. The grace of God. Yes, I've been born again. The grace of God. I am forgiven, a child of the King. There ain't no shame on me. Coward and doubt is a thief, and worries can drive you straight to defeat. But there is a promise He's given to me. The battle's been won, yeah, He's my victory. I am saved by the blood of the Lamb. I am free. Amen.
he may. Let's give the Lord a hand. Yes, he may. Hey, man, you can be seated just for a minute. And uh, nobody come. I told you we was going to close. That's what we're going to do. I just got to make a couple of announcements. Amen.